Hey, what's up everybody? This is Gray here. And today it's, uh, well, it's 7 o'clock in the evening. Uh, and we're going to go from basically point A to point Z on starting my sweet potato slips. And I'm going to show you the entire process of how I'm going to do that. From the soil mixture that I'm going to use to how I cut the slips and to uh, how deep I'm going to plant them uh, and what I'm going to be planting them in, which you guys know is going to be a 50 gallon grow bag. We decided to go with the sweet potatoes being that the heat this summer is nasty and it's way beyond the time to do regular white potatoes. Me, preferably, I like sweet potatoes. To me, they're packing more of a nutritious punch and a very high caloric dense food as well. So <clears throat> I got a bunch of stuff behind me and all kinds of stuff like that. I'm going to be mixing some soil. I'm going to fill this up. And of course, I'm not going to make you go through that entire process, but I'll explain things I'm going and speed things along and stuff like that. So stay tuned and join me on uh, planting some sweet potato slips. And then to follow up with this video down the road, we'll be checking on it every few weeks and seeing how the slips are doing. One key thing here is, folks, is you always want to do your potato slips right as, as, as basically as, as it starts getting cool, when the sun starts to set, because you're going to even give these sweet potato slips uh, more of a opportunity to uh, kind of stay strong as what they are because when you're cutting them, when you're cutting them you're going to be kind of causing stress and whatnot now some even may dry out to a certain point but believe it or not if you give it time a lot of the times they will come back so don't be deterred if you happen to drop some sweet potato slips uh, down in your uh, gardening section and they happen to have some sort of issue now some may die but most will come back they're pretty resilient plant uh, that being said sweet potatoes like pretty much a well draining sandy-ish kind of soil uh, and here in Florida, we have lots of sand, but I'm going to give them a little bit of a benefit by using some of the other stuff. Uh, I'm going to be using sphagnum peat moss. I'm going to be using uh, vermiculite. I'm also going to be using perlite, uh, some compost, and some generalized uh, potting soil. Mixing that all together and uh, putting this together in the 50-gallon grow bag. All right, so let's get started. All right, folks, so of course what we're going to need is a 50-gallon grow bag here. Uh, you can see these things are pretty massive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill out the bottom of this bag with some topsoil. Basically to kind of give the grow bag some structure before I start putting good stuff in here. So I'm going to jump, dump basically one of these topsoils. And these are like maybe a dollar or two at your local place. And I'm basically going to fill out this grow bag here to kind of give it some structure before I go to that. And this is just gonna make a foundation for my grow bag. And of course, you wanna go as cheap as possible. You wanna save money, don't you? So you wanna go with something cheap uh, because of all the other stuff you're gonna go into. Now you can use sand and other things, but that's gonna kinda give my grow bag a structure. Anyways, uh, so, <laughs> Lady Gray's still getting used to the camera stuff, so. <laughs> Anyways, folks, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna start mixing my soil. Uh, basically what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to pour some topsoil in here. I'm going to go ahead and put some topsoil in there. Some good stuff, not the cheap stuff, in here. There you go. And that's going to kind of give me a base right in here. And you can see this stuff is very loose soil. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab myself some vermiculite. Now, if you want, what you can do is you're going to, I'm going to take one part vermiculite, four parts perlite uh, to kind of give it more, because the vermiculite is going to hold more moisture. One key thing you want to be careful with is you don't want the, basically the soil to retain too much moisture uh, when you're doing this because you don't want to get root rot or any types of fungus and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and grab one of these. This is kind of like a little measuring thing here that I'm going to be doing here. Uh, so I'm going to grab one of these and fill it up with the vermiculite over here. And vermiculite almost looks like sand. It's kind of cool. And I'm going to try to get them even as possible, but then I'm going to just go ahead and pour this vermiculite in here like that. That's one part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get this perlite and you can use coarse, uh, maybe uh, medium coarse or whatnot of the uh, perlite. 
Now this is going to be a little bit more easier for me to pour in this bucket here. I'm going to go ahead and pour that <clears throat> in here. So if I miss anything, it's kind of being poured right into here. So I'm going to use four of these to one vermiculite. And yes, I am a messy gardener, but it's what I enjoy. That's three. And four. Almost looks like winter time, doesn't it, folks? And four. Some people are saying, man, that's a lot of vermiculite, or uh, uh, perlite, but it is what it is, folks. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this sphagnum uh, moss here is peat moss throw that in there and looks like we're running out of room we're going to take a little bit of compost throw that in there I know it's not exactly but I'm going to use a half a bag of this here then this is the fun part this is where I'm going to mix it all up, and I like to use my hands. I could use the shovel, something like this, and kind of get in there and mix it all up and stuff like that, but I'd rather use my hands. <clears throat> Ain't nothing like getting your hands down and dirty with your soil. Because I feel like I can get deeper into this with mixing it with my hands. And that's the fun part, is getting dirty. And as you can see, as I'm mixing this in, you can see the vermite, the vermiculite. I don't know why I always pronounce things wrong, but that's gray. And all this stuff getting mixed in here. And when I feel I got a nice consistent mix here, I'll get this all ready and put it in my 50 gallon grow bag. I want to get all the way down there, all the way to the bottom where I have some of that soil at. Bring it up to the top. Just kind of blend that in there. And the reason I want to show you step by step is in case some of you folks out there want to see how I do it specifically, you know? All right. I think I got it pretty much well blended. There we go. You can see that all there. Nice little blend. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dump it into the 50 gallon grow bag. The easy way to do this, you take this here. That's why I like this little cart here. I'm going to roll this over here. And then I'm going to kind of push this down a little bit to get some of this in here like this and just start dumping. As you can see, there still needs to be some mixing with the soil here as we pull this out. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift up on this a little bit here. Because I'm probably going to lose a little bit. Bring this up. But whoever said gardening was not messy. <laughs> there we go. Get that nice in there. Get this grow back nice and filled out. And I'm, I'm going to leave probably an inch or two at the top. So that I can put... Basically, I'm going to put, uh, what do I like to use? Uh, this, I use the straw. Now, what I might do also is I might just put a small layer right at the top of some soil. Because this is going to be the median, or medium, as I say, that the sweet potato, see how loose that is? Very loose. Because the looser it is, the better the sweet potato production you're going to get. Now we're probably going to put six slips in here. I'm probably going to do four or five on the outside. Yeah, I think five and then one in the middle. All right, I want to kind of flatten this out here. And that's going to be the base for it. And then like I said, I might add one more thing to it. I might add some soil to this at the top just to kind of give it a little bit of firm, but it's not going to be a huge big deal. All right, folks, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab our slips and cut those slips. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. All right, folks. So here you can see we have these big old slips here in the mother plant. There are slips all over this thing here. You got plenty of slips to choose from. And we're going to kind of pull six of these. 
Now, usually you want them at least 11 to 12 inches because we're going to bury them a certain depth. So usually what I do is I go from where the leaves are kind of going right here, and I'll come down past the second node down here, and I'm going to go ahead and snip right here, just like that. And that's kind of the height that I'm going to want each one. Now, when I bury them, of course, I'm going to take this little thing off here. I could snip it, or you can just kind of peel it off if you want to be a perfectionist or whatever. But you can just snap that there. And that's going to be my slip. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera well. Hand that. And we're going to get six of these, or yeah, six of these total uh, from this mother plant. And then we're going to go over to the 50-gallon grow bag. All right, folks. So remember that initial slip that we had here? You got some leaves on there. That's going to be our first one. And as you can see, I have five other ones so what i'm going to do basically uh see how this one here is, is just the one leaf basically that's all i really want to leave is one leaf so ones that i have like this basically i'm going to come in here and i'm going to cut that leaf off and leave it like that with the one leaf and we're going to continue to do this with each one of these so cut that off there's another one cut that off and they're all varying different degrees of sizes and whatnot and that one there and then we have we should have our one two three four five and six slips there we go so here comes the here comes the easy part <laughs> basically i'm going to go ahead and drop my shears over here basically i'm going to basically find a hole and i'm going to put six of these in here so i'm going to come down deep with a little hole here and I'm going to put my slip in here like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to come up as high as I can to this plant. So I'm going to go deeper and deeper until I get to where I want to be at. I want to give this an opportunity to have its best possible opportunity. And then kind of push that soil around that there. And that's one. And like I said, we'll probably go, let me see, one. We'll stick one in the middle here. We'll go outside 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 and outside so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go ahead and finish this part up right here for you guys and uh then i'll come back and uh we'll show you the last part i'm going to do and some folks will tell you folks some people say don't water these for a while and whatnot well i'm going to water them because everything that i've looked at and some of the research i've done in my experience with it is to go ahead and give these a little bit of water uh especially with the heat that's out here right now i'm going to go ahead and water them uh, I'm also going to add some bone meal uh, to the soil as well. Uh, that nitrogen in that bone meal is going to help these things start to get going, you know what I mean? And we want to help these things start to uh, produce, basically, and start to grow out their foliage and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work, and I'll be back with you guys here shortly. All right, folks, so uh, if you can see here, I got all my slips in, buried up to where I think they're going to do well. Uh, you can see kind of where all the nodes are pretty much covered other than some of these straight up slips here. Um, but believe it or not, these things will grow. You'll be surprised. Very surprised. So here in my hand, what I have is some bone meal here. It's roughly about two cups that I'm going to start with. Uh, I don't want to go too overly, uh, I don't want to do too much of it first. So I'm going to use roughly about two cups of bone meal. And I'm going to put it in the top layer of soil and work it in a little bit right there. So when I'm watering, uh, those nutrients are going to filter down below. Uh, and help with the root systems and all that stuff like that transpire. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to sprinkle a little bit of the bone meal throughout here, throughout the soil, around all these plants here. And then I'm going to work this bone meal into the soil. I'm not going to just leave it there on top. And then I'm just kind of liberally just kind of, you know, throwing it around here just so it's the entire area of the soil is going to get mixed into it. And basically all I'm going to do it's just kind of like work this into the soil a little bit around these plants and it will eventually work its way down deeper into the soil now again everybody does things different this is just my way and you're more than welcome to uh you know follow my direction or just wait till i see here in the next you know 90 days or so and see how this works itself out and uh say okay gray did a great job or gray did a horrible job uh, and growing his sweet potatoes uh, because we're going to see what our harvest is going to be uh, here in uh, the I think what's roughly about 90 days maybe a little bit longer we'll see we'll see how this pans out folks we'll see how this pans out all right 
So now that we got all that worked in there, the last thing I'm going to do, and I'm pretty sure you guys don't want to watch me water it, but I'm going to add, you know, just enough water to saturate the soil a little bit uh, because I know the sun tomorrow uh, is probably going to be bright, and bright, 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 sunny here in Florida. The humidity is outrageous. Heat index of like 102. I don't know if you can see the sweat pouring off my face, but that's Florida. But sweet potatoes grow great in this environment. So they're going to have full sun, uh, and uh, we're going to water them. We'll water them today. Uh, I'll wait a couple of days, water them again, uh, and then I'll start tapering off my watering schedule to basically once a week, maybe every two weeks. Uh, but depending on how the heat is and whatnot, I'll be testing the soil uh, and all that stuff like that to see where we go. Other than that, folks, this is going to be my 50-gallon grow bag with sweet potatoes. Let me know down in the comments what you think, what I did wrong, what I did right, what you think. How do you grow your sweet potatoes? What do you use to grow your sweet potatoes in? use you know uh, you know the plastic kitty pools five gallon buckets do you use grow bags how successful are you at doing it i love to hear from you the viewers because us sharing this information is going to make us all better gardeners so that being said folks this is gray man and i want to tell you as always be safe out there and know you're not alone this is gray man i'm out i'll see you guys in rebound god bless